Hi, my name is Julia. In this quarter, I decided to read Look Me in the Eye by John Elder Robison. This book covers John's life having Asperger's disorder and how it affected his ability to have long-lasting relationships, have a good education, and a stable work, work, and third of all, how the knowledge of him having this disorder changed his life forever. So the first topic that John really gets into is how his disease limited his ability to have friendships and long-lasting relationships with even his parents. And one factor that affected this very much was his little understanding of why other people did not like the same things that he did. So to show an example of a situation like this, John gave an example which in which he pet a girl at his school. So John did this because at his in his home life, his mom would scratch his head, and he thought of this as petting. And he really enjoyed that. So he went to school and did the same thing in order to try and make a friend. But the girl did not like that, and she slapped him. And even though John kept persisting and trying to be friends with her, trying to have conversations with her, she would not let him in. And that was something that was really sad for John, and that really affected his future. Another reason that John could not make friends was his lack of empathy. <coughs> this is a very common trait with Asperger's, and it really is something that hinders your ability to make friendships because it's a main characteristic of a long-lasting friendship. So an example that John gives of how um, his lack of empathy did not allow him to have relationships with people was one time when his mom's friend was over, she said, did you hear about Eleanor Parker's son? Last Saturday, he got hit by a train and killed, and he was playing on the tracks. And John's reaction to this was that he smiled. And this really angered his mom's friend, and so she started yelling at him. And this just goes to show how a lack of empathy will really aggravate people and get them thinking that you're a bad person when you're really not because John just did not know how to react. And last of all, something that really affected John's ability to have long-lasting relationships was his in inability to know how to respond correctly in having conversations. So when he was younger, he really did not know like what the correct response would be. So when someone would say, look at my Tonka truck, he would have gave a response that was completely unrelated, like, I have a helicopter or, or my mom is mad at me today, which would really draw people away from him because they just thought he was weird and crazy. But he really wasn't. He just didn't know how to respond. And also, he didn't, when he grew up, he didn't know the difference between what a logical response was and what you were supposed to say when you were having small talk. So if someone, when someone said to him, one of my girlfriends is having an affair and the guy rides a motorcycle just like yours, he didn't know what to say because there was no logical connection between the two statements that were given to him. And he thought that it was weird. And also... This affected his relationship with the girl who said it because she thought he was just being rude and not responding to her when he really he just was thinking about what to say. So in the second section of his book, John discusses how his disorder really affected his professional life. And this all began when he first dropped out of high school where he was already failing all of his classes because he just didn't care enough to try. He discovered that he had an affinity to machines. And because this is... A cause directly a cause of his disorder it really directed the path he went down in his life so <coughs> John first discovered this affinity when he was fixing a TV in his house and before he even knew it he started taking up uh, fixing amplifiers from schools and this carried him on and carried him on through connections and he eventually started fixing amplifiers for a huge band which was called KISS and he was making them machines and he eventually started making them special effects guitars which he loved and he did that for many years but eventually it he just grew out of that music world where there was so much negative energy around him and also drugs and alcohol that he did not want to be a part of so 
he eventually fell out of that world. But what he realized that what got him so far within it was that Asperger's gave him an ability to focus and laser focus and learn so much in a such a short period of time that he was able to perform such marvelous tasks and give these bands such amazing equipment. So Asperger's really affected his success in his life, especially in the music industry. And even when he went and started his corporate life after he quit the music industry, he realized that he was good at engineering. And when he was at the very bottom, that's why that's when he worked his best because all he was doing was science and making machines. But as he moved his way up in the world, he had to direct more and more people. And as a cause, he did not like his job as much and he wasn't as good at it because he wasn't doing so much science. At that point, he was just directing people, which he did not like at all. So he eventually quit his job and he started a mechanic shop where he could also use his skills in mechanics and machines to to his benefit and may, be making money at the same time. So he eventually found a happy in-between where he could do what he loved and also what he was good at. John finishes up the book by discussing his diagnosis with Asperger's and how it affected his life in many positive ways because he was able to shift and adjust to the disease and change how he acted in order to have a better life all around. So the first thing that happened was that he was at lunch with his friend who was a psychologist and he had been reading a book about Asperger's and he realized when he was with John that he fit almost all the criteria and this led him to believe that he did have Asperger's. And at first John did not believe him but he read about he read the book and realized that wow this is completely who I am and it felt him made him feel reassured that it wasn't him who was different or bad or worse his whole life it was just that he had a disease that made him different than other people but he was not inferior so this changed his life because he was able to adjust to how normal people would act and he, he would see the difference between how he acted and what the norm was. So he began to make adjustments so that people would think of him as somewhat normal and he would not be seen as someone who was weird or inferior because he could see that he was different and he could act like the other people around him in order to not offend them or make them think that he was weird. In this day and age, we have a stigma that surrounds mental illnesses and disorders. John was not diagnosed until his late 40s, so for the majority of his life, he had no clue why he did not fit in normally with others. The main reason for this issue is that we did not provide the funding or resources needed to diagnose people correctly and get them the help they need to live normally in our society. If the resources were present to diagnose John early on, and if more people were aware of these disorders, then he may have had a widely different outcome in his life. This book allows us to realize that there are people out there who deal with these disorders, and as a society, we should welcome them, welcome them and allow them to know that they are not different than the rest of us. So the first quote I chose is, Asperger's is not a disease. It's a way of being. There is no cure, nor is there a need for one. There is, however, a need for knowledge and adaptation on the part of Aspergian kids and their families and friends. So the reason I chose this quote is because I think this represents the whole entire purpose of the book, really. It really shows that we do need more awareness in our society in order for Asper people who have Asperger's to feel that they fit in and they are really just another person in the world. And that's all anyone really ever wants. So I think this really relays the message that the book is trying to get across and it also is showing how after John lived his whole life without knowing that he had Asperger's and feeling like he was an outcast, that if he had just had not even known a cure or known that it is a disease, he if he just known that, or if the people around him had just adjusted to his disease and treated him a little bit better, then 
he would have turned out as a completely different person. And this is something that we need to work on as a society. The second quote I chose is, I needed to stop forcing myself to fit in to something that I could never be a part of. And this is a quote I chose because it really shows the true wants and needs of every person and that we all just want to fit in and be a part of something that is greater than us. And if we don't adapt as a society and make some changes to help people who have mental illnesses and raise awareness for these kinds of things and they will never feel like they fit in and they belong to a certain place and that's just not a life that we want other people to have and if we can make those changes then everyone it will be a better place for everyone overall this book was really inspiring and a great read i recommend it to anyone who is looking for a book who that will inspire you to make changes in society or even just get you to be aware about mental illnesses and I think it's a good read for any reading level. It's pretty easy and the vocab is not hard at all. It's a very good book and I highly recommend it. Thank you.